Hey guys, Joe here, also known as Linby E J B. Um, I got a lot of requests for you guys, uh, from you guys, to talk during my video. Um, so I think I'll go ahead and do it today, just because there's a little bit of explaining to do if you guys are new to Soil Mod. Um, installing a Soil Mod itself is pretty quite self-explanatory the instructions that he included with the mod itself is um, just basically cookbook copy paste and um, you just um, use control F find the values you're looking for replace with the exclamation points and then just copy and paste into your i3d it's always good practice to um, to make a saved like back up your game, your 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 map before you start messing around with it. Um, that's just good practice with anything if you're gonna start tweaking because things happen. I don't care who you are or how good you are. Things happen. Computers crash. You get corrupt saves. Um, it's happened to me multiple times. So it's just you just learn from it and avoid doing it again. But um, we had a pretty um, productive MP sessions these last two days, Memorial Weekend. I didn't have any classes and no exams this week, so I had a couple hours um, to play instead of study. So um, we went ahead and we I finished um, corn, corn and soybean harvest over there to the left, the field on the left, um, field one. Uh, that was soybean. Uh, managed to get a pretty good yield from that. Uh, field 2 here, this is uh, this was corn. Uh, north and south end of 44 were corn. Um, kind of like messed around and rearranged the field here for a better layout so it's not so crazy. Uh, 17, we picked up 17 last season and that was uh, soybean. Um, and our little field uh, 3 here, I removed a house just because it was uh, kind of annoying. Um, we have our map buyable objects, we have some money, um, so I think we're going to go ahead and uh, buy another field because I haven't farmed over there, uh, down by the BP gas station and the, the little lake over there in houses, so I don't know how those fields play, I don't know what it's like, so we pretty much uh, went ahead and we spread NPK with the DN345 on these fields right after harvest, and then we went and... Um, we were tag teaming each field with the 2100s. We didn't do any headlands with that. I know in like real life you usually rip the headlands, but it, in this game it's just um, we just uh, avoided doing the headlands. And then we came back and uh, with our new Kuhn Kraus uh, 5635, um, we uh, put down uh, liquid MPK as well as we cultivated. Um, it's not the easiest thing to do. It, it's almost easier to actually cultivate and then come with a sprayer and spray your NPK. But we we want to try to be you know use our spring tillage tool since I spent the you know the enormous hours making it and getting it in game. So we want to do it as um, realistic as possible. So we're putting a lot of hours on our machines now. I think the 9560R. Um, has like 70 hours or 65 hours on it now so because that that machines used year round it's used to uh, cultivate I had it on the 2720 but traded that in for another 2100 um, it's on the grain cart it's it was planting so that that 9560R was used year round as is the 8370R um, we usually run that on the 2100 we can run it on the Kuhn Kraus um, I wasn't sure if you could actually run a 370 horsepower tractor on that. It's a 5 fold 50 foot, but on the Kuhn Kraus website it says uh, this this tool is rated, uh, the Kuhn Kraus is rated at um, 298 to 400 horsepower. So I don't know what's going on there, but I, I've always seen videos and pictures of um, significantly larger equipment. So we're going to come up here and we 
we have MPK, so we're just gonna putz on down here. On the left, on the left, I have a trigger for uh, fertilizer, and then and this right bay, it's uh, lime. So it loads default at that, and then up, up in the new shed up here, um, we have a sprayer trigger for liquids. So there's our two uh, field cultivating rigs with uh, the DEM. Uh, it's just the DEMs from 13. I just uh, imported into uh, Blender and gave it a new uh, AO texture, and it's also washable. And um, use my I I didn't use the script that came with it. I used my Montag the my script and mod description for my Montag, and that seemed to work really well. And it's great. So it has a working width of 16, and uh, seems to work really well. So we're gonna come down here. Um, and we're gonna buy another field, and we're gonna put down this MPK before we plow plow it up with the 2100. So those of you that aren't really familiar with or like how soil mod works, a plow. Um, Anytime you plow something, you get more benefit out of the soil mod. Essentially, you get more value for your money. So, let's say you like this DN345. Let's say it's like has 10,000 worth of fertilizer in it. And let's say you just broadcast it over a field and don't plow. You'll only get one point value for N and PK. Now, if you were to uh, broadcast it and then plow it in, I think you get like two two points. Um, and then if you cultivate it, I think you get like uh, maybe like one and a half or something. But it's always best to plow. You get the highest benefits or most value for your money because you get the highest increase in your, your values if you were to plow. Now, he also has it, so the chop straw actually has um, value now if you were to plow in your uh, residue from your corn and soybean. Um, it actually increases the nitrogen and uh, PK values, but they add different different amounts like you get more benefit from corn residue than you do from soybean residue and um, the which is um, fine I mean you get a lot more residue from corn anyways and then um, the crops themselves actually take in different ratios of nutrients so you can actually do crop rotation let's say because if you look at if you look at this field here this was soybean last it is eight and eight and four, and that that's just because it was soybean. And then you look at this field, which was corn. It's nine and five. So the vet, the the actual residue from the corn, it has gave an extra point for N and PK. So now we're flip flopping. We're putting this field over here, corn, and this field over here, soybean, and it will balance itself out. So it. It encourages a, a crop rotation um, uh, strategy. So this is the field we're looking at buying. This is um, field 13. Uh, it's kind of rough. Haven't touched it. Um, still has the chop straw from when I had it in 13. So I haven't farmed this at all. Um, I don't know. I haven't farmed this field in probably... I don't know, probably over 12 months. Um, so I don't know how it plays and since I built it. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up Page Manager here. Um, it's the right control. And then we're going to use our Page Up, Page Down keys. We're going to look for Field, Field 13. So Field 13 is 300, you know, basically 25,000. It's 20 point some odd hectares, which is... Uh, it's 40, 50, like 60 acres, something like that. So we're just going to go ahead and press enter. And uh, we still have a pretty decent amount. We sold a lot of uh, corn during a great demand. We sold a lot of soybean. 
I sold a lot of soybean. And uh, we still have... Let's see here. We still have a lot of corn. Uh, almost 840,000 liters of corn still. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to putz around this field and broadcast some NPK. Uh, we have a lot of residue. I think it was barley that was in here last. Um, and uh, you can see the little blue the little uh, blue uh, fleck, which is supposed to be symbolic of the uh, fertilizer we're putting down. So... So I always like to do this. I always like to uh, get a pretty good base of nutrients into the soil before I plant because ideal ratios I think are like 7 and 4, 7 nitrogen, 4 pK in 100% moisture to get your best yield at all growth stages. So I like to get, uh, I like to put down, after I harvest, I like to put down uh, solid NPK with the DN. And then I come and I t do my primary tillage, and then I'll put down a liquid form of fertilizer or a liquid uh, herbicide, or um, you know, depending on what kind of crops I plant, maybe I'll just have to put down nitrogen instead of NPK because, like soybean or corn, might zap the the nitrogen more than the PK. Um, because if you go over ideal ratios, it it it, it, it reduces your yield, so you can't just like be uh, clear cutting this, you have to be kind of a selective cut, you have to be paying attention to your fields and like the ratios of your nutrients because you really don't want to go overboard um, so I mean this isn't a big field, I think we might have overpaid for it a little bit the field day team down by the farm, it's a lot it's the same price, same acreage, but it's a lot nicer. It's not so uh, irregular with the... the uh, it has the nice parallel lines on both sides, so it's easy to run with the GPS. It's easy to plant, easy to harvest, but I really wanted to get over here and start farming these fields, so that's what we're doing. We'll probably pick up field 18 next. Um, it's only 200000 more than what we have now, so could easily do that when we sell the rest of our corn. So I'll just get my AB line up here. I'll load, uh, see what this is, that's uh, 26. Actually, I'll just do it like this. Let's do like this and see how this goes. Just some arbitrary GPS. And uh, this, I'm running patch 1.3 beta 2. Uh, I mean, it seems to be working really well. I like the added effects they did in um, the, the patch. The You know, depending on what kind of terrain you're on, it, it drives really rough like plowed texture, you bounce all over the place, you can maybe get up to 20 miles an hour. Uh, anything faster than that you're going to be uh, spinning in circles essentially. But I like how it really works the suspension, works the wheel. This uh, 8R doesn't have suspension cab where my 9R does and my CAT and uh, the 9RT, those all have cab suspension so you can really see the cab, cab work and you're just bouncing in the cab, it's pretty cool. So, added some new textures for barley and wheat. Um, have some nice soybean textures, some nice corn texture. Um, so yeah, so not much going on this end of the field. It's just uh, a cell point, uh, and then another house. So. No, no traffic coming down. Just pretty quiet. I might put in more car spines, but uh, we went and we traded in our Kinsey 1050 for 1500, 
so hopefully that uh, we can do a little bit longer longer uh, passes with our combine we're running a 12 row header I, I almost was I had to adjust the yield because soil mod kind of like doubled my yield as compared to my in game before I had soil mod so I had to adjust the yields to be more accurate I just did that now because I just calculated my yields after I finished harvest and they're about twice as much as they should have been so I don't know if that was a issue of running the old soil mod on the 1.2 patch. I don't I don't know what it was, but so we're gonna have to wait till this season's harvest to check the numbers again. Cause I I want it to be around 250 bushel corn and 70 bushel soybean. And the soybeans pretty much spot on. The corn was like 450. I was like, yeah. so ended up pulling like 3.2 million liters. In, and I just like went to my sake in and I reduced it to like 2.2 so because I was wondering why my bin it's a 800 uh, well it's a 400 bushel bin extension I think or something like that but it's total capacity installed is 800 bushel so anything less than that I couldn't even make a make a full Full pass. But I understand like some farmers they put on an eight row header just because it's lighter and they want to go they don't want to like stop in the middle of the field to unload or make some kind of like cuts and stuff so but then but then it takes forever because after we pick this up now we're farming like I think we're farming around 460 acres now between all the fields we own um, it doesn't seem like that much, but it's definitely a lot of work now that we're doing tillage. We're doing primary and secondary tillage. I mean, it doesn't take that long to plant. You can plant this all of our fields in maybe three hours with our DB120. Three or four hours, I'm not even sure. But it takes, takes a while. Go through a lot of seed. So here's a little lake up here and BP gas station folks have their docks out so now the way I understand it is let's say I put down NPK broadcast it as I, I am now uh, in the solid form and if I were to go ahead and do it again before the soil mod updates I have it takes uh, four days per grow stage on this map so it takes uh, a while to get to, to harvest. So now if I were to put down solid NPK and then come back and put down a liquid form of NPK, the way I understand it is I would get no benefit from the NPK. I would only get the benefit of the moisture because it's liquid. Because you can't put one layer on top of another layer. Now if I were to put down just N, I think I would get extra benefit because... Um, the way he has it set up is there's six layers and you can put down MPK because that's one letter, one layer, then you could put down N and then you could also put down PK separately because those are like three three separate individual fruit types. But um, if you were to put down MPK solid and MPK liquid that's essentially the same thing except the liquid you'd get moisture but moisture is kind of a, a pain because if it's warm out it like if you look in your forecast and it's sunny you're gonna lose 14 percent moisture if it's cloudy or neutral if it, and it rains you get 14 percent moisture for every hour it rains so moisture is pretty uh, hard to keep up Um, you want to till as little as possible because every time you till, it reduces the moisture. Um, so that's kind of why we put down a liquid fertilizer when we till because it kind of balances itself out. Um, and we put we put the the nutrients is going behind the cutting area of the cultivator. 
so we're only getting, gaining one level versus like one and a half or two points. So, I mean, you can switch it where you could put the spray from the trailer in front of the cutting area of the cultivator, and you get the benefit of the cultivation, cultivating, incorporating it into the soil. So there's a few different strategies you can do depending on your how you, how you guys want to farm. So I traded out the 2720 because I wanted another 2100 because I didn't really want a um, a, a combination disc ripper. Um, I ended up changing it from a plow cultivator to just a plow since I built the Coon Krause field cultivator. And then um, I didn't put roller baskets on it because I wanted to have a separate tool that um, I don't know what it's called, like soil compactor, uh, conditioner, roller basket, you know, whatever. It just like breaks up the clumps and like makes it nice and smooth after the cultivator. So, but I was gonna end up eventually building one of those, although I haven't yet decided how I want to set it up. I know. Um, Xavier at Big Boss Modding made those little field rollers and made them cult, uh, fertilize as they roll. So I'm not sure if I can make it fertilize or if I make it just another cultivator. But I mean, you have a cultivator, then cultivator doesn't make sense, really. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm that's the only reason why I haven't pulled the trigger on that project yet. But I mean, it would look cool. It would be fun to play with, but the value, the, the actual like value from using it, the, there really is no value from using it. That's the only reason. I don't really like making irrelevant things because although it's a simple tool, it's still going to be like 20 hours worth of work to make it, to model it, texture it, pull it apart, separate components, animate, script it, test it. So it's a lot of work for a tool that really has no purpose in game although it would look cool and probably be fun so so what we usually do is after we broadcast our MPK is we come with our 2100s and we just uh, do an initial primary primary rip and then we'll come back again with our uh, Kuhn Kraus with our DEM anhydrous, fill it up with liquid MPK, and do it again. This field over here to the right is also. Uh, has that island now where I'm from up in northern northwest Wisconsin it's um, has a very rich Indian history and um, farmers they have these um, especially over by my house they have these big islands in their fields just of trees and you know these big mounds what they are is they're Indian burial mounds and if you were to actually like, go and dig like my neighbor he's kind of older um, but he used to, when he was younger, he used to go and like dig in these these uh, burial mounds, which is technically illegal, because I think they're protected by federal law. But he would actually go in and dig, and he would uh, he has this really impressive collection of Indian arrowheads and uh, a glass glass display cases in his basement. I mean, he probably has a couple hundred Indian heads and arrow actual arrow arrows with the arrowheads attached and it's pretty cool to think that a couple hundred years ago it's it was a totally different landscape than it is today so I tried to uh, replicate that in some locations um, around the map and I tried to make um, now I I am not a fan whatsoever of square flat fields. It's really boring. Um, they're extremely easy to make. It takes no effort to make a square field. It takes no effort to to put in the field uh, dimensions. So I don't think I have a single square field in this, and none of it is flat. There's if you look across, it's like hilly. 
it makes your tractor work. Um, it's challenging to, to plant sometimes because you're working with it so, so wide. Um, but if you're driving like you, 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 all these little gradual hills and slopes, uh, it's pretty cool when you're in multiplayer and all of a sudden you see someone in your mirror or, and then they disappear underneath uh, the hill, at the bottom of the hill. So, like Jake was out here and he was planting for me and I see this massive 83, 70R with a DB120 planter and then I look the other way for a second and I look back and he's gone. He just disappeared under a hill. So, all you see is a massive dust cloud. So it's pretty cool. This is a relatively flat field, yet still pretty hilly in some parts. When you get in there, it makes you you work all of a sudden you're going, you know, 10, 12 miles an hour with your tillage tool, and now you're slowed down to five. So it's pretty cool. I like how they implemented the MR. The physics, the physics in FS15 compared to FS13 is not even comparable. FS13 is the biggest joke <laughs> I've ever 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 seen it's a total joke I I quit playing that game until Darrell came out with MR so I probably like stopped playing that game for like four or five months and then he released that and I thought that was the coolest thing ever because I mean you couldn't even load a bale you would drive on the ground onto a road and you'd go flying 20 feet up in the air the mass calculations in the the G Giants editor were so bizarre and had no like real logical method. Whereas now you look on Charter House, you see it's like a Case IH Quadtrack 600, 2500 kg. You put 2500 or you put 25 kg in GE, and bam, you're done. You know. And it tells you exactly where your center of mass is, and you can do developer tools and use that to adjust your suspension on your on your tires so that it drives nice and I don't know the game itself is incredible the lighting they they like rework their entire engine because the lights no longer lay the game I have clip distance on all my transforms at a thousand so like that farm over there I could see that light I could see the light on that American flag over on that white barn turned on at night. So it's really incredibly cool. So we just went ahead and uh, broadcast our NPK solid and then I think I'll end the video here and do another video. Probably won't talk but we'll do another video of um, ripping the, that field with 2100s. So, in here we just have um, this uh, shed I released on American Eagles Modding, just to get a little bit more diversity in sheds. Um, also my little one. And... Uh, I'll just back it up, like... Right there. And then, um, so we have the S6A, I don't know why, but people are keep asking, like, someone stole the picture I have of mine, and they put it as, like, their mod download picture, and it looks nothing like it. This is a S680, no folding pipe, with a big dick bit extension, and this, this whole thing I put in... I did some model work on it. it has nice see-through um, um, stairs and steps in the bin too, and up here. And I put in some more um, black uh, pads and the new AO on the bin extension and pipe. Uh, I did the same thing to the 612C uh, header over there. So I don't understand how people are like, "Oh, is this yours?" It's like, no, it's some. Some dumbass just like took my picture and used it. They well, what they did is they used the bin extension from the new hall and the idiots leaked from my my mods folder, and they slapped it on the deer. And the thing is, it's not even my bin. Justin Hayes built it like months ago. 
Yeah, I don't know. No respect in the community anymore, so whatever. So we went ahead and we bought bought this uh, Kinsey 1500. Oh, here's my Montague. I have it parked over here. Open up this door. Um. Oh, here's big, big R. So we have uh, our John Deere 9560R. Uh, um, this has animation scripts, so I can. Uh, and then it also has raise and lower stock rollers. That uh, that's pretty cool. So you can see this has like cab suspension, so like the cab will like go all over the place and uh, so we'll hook that up to a uh, nice see-through grill go ahead and hook that up um, this is the new Kinsey 1500 it's pretty cool um, the only thing is the overloader script doesn't work um, in multiplayer it did in patch like 1.1 but it stopped working in 1.2 and I don't know if it works in 1.3 but they need to get on their game and release scripts so we can get that working. Um, I could re-script it as default, but um, so I I had the little shed over here, but it doesn't. I don't know. I got rid of it. It shouldn't be there because you can't really have. This is supposed to be an old farm, and the idea is I just dosed the old red one and built a new shed, and then. Um, I have map buyable objects so you can buy the grain facilities in the new shed over there. So here's the, our, our new uh, field cultivators we bought from our when we sold our grain hydraulics and I went with this field cultivator. Initially, I was gonna uh, build a John Deere because I pretty much had it, you know, the frames, all the components already built uh, with my 2720, but um, there's too much. There's too much John Deere. There's too much New Holland. There's too much Case IH. So, um, to my knowledge, I did, I've never seen a Coon. I've never seen a Coon Kraus. I've never seen a Kraus field cultivator. And I went with this one because the the these uh, support wheels are rigid, and so I mean the modeling. It took the same amount of effort to model, but it's just one less thing to animate the raise and lower. Um, since I already had it's a five folding, it's a lot of cylinders to script in, a lot of animations to like a lot of nodes to point put in. Um, so that's great. And then um, this little guy back here works great. Doc Eli's little toy. So I just went and uh, DM. Gave that a new texture and made it washable for 15. This thing is great. Um, has a working width of 16 meters at the end of the day, which I think is pretty close. It's like 15 and a half or 50 point, point five feet. Um, I ran into an issue initially. I had these front these front wheels as actual wheels, and it ended up being like 18 wheels total. And I kept getting it error, so I guess they have a capacity of wheels. They probably like caps at like 16 or 15 or something like that. I don't know, but it definitely did not like 18 wheels. So I put the, them as rotation nodes. FYI, if you're looking to add a lot of wheels, whereas my um, my DB120 has 12 wheels or something like that. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know, but it's it's probably like really close. But I really like this uh, this orange, this Kuhn Kraus orange. I think Kraus was red. Um, Kraus was actually I think the the same model, but when it was just Kraus was like 60 foot. This is 50 foot. Um, but I have the animation folding animation staggered so one side folds. And then the other one folds like a little bit after, um, just a little bit more realistic effect. And this Amazon sprayer, I mean, it works great. It's the same working width as the the self-propelled. Same, it actually has more capacity, um, but it's just so ugly and annoying. And 
I really want to get another sprayer eventually. So this is Julian's 2100. Um, what I did is I just uh, rescaled the shanks to be a little bit beefier, a little bit longer. Um, but he did a really nice job on the model. And then uh, Raphael's Wilson trailer. Old Pete. I don't know who made this, but Jake Jake uh, sent this to me. It's, uh, we overpaid for this trailer by about 50000 I think it's like 50, 53000 or something like that. I mean, that trailer shouldn't be any more than 8000 but whatever. We, funny story, we were using that machinery rental mod and uh, for a great demand because I had no money. I had to take out a loan to even rent the, 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 the equipment. We had to rent another Pete and another Wilson. And the machinery rental glitches, like it's a cool mod, but it needs to be reworked because it causes a lot of errors, causes lag, causes, like when I initially buy it, I can't even use it. I have to reset the vehicles to even get in. Um, and then, anyways, well, we, we had it and it, it, uh, it, you rent it for a day. And I don't know if you're supposed to bring it back and sell it or if it disappears. But anyways, like we sold it and then we like did a save game because we don't want we want to like I wanted to edit the map again, uh, get rid of some buildings and like uh, do that stuff. And I put in another road here, so it's kind of a more on the grain complex, so it's more easy to get in and out. Um, did some work with like entry roads to fields. But anyways, uh, we took the we had the vehicle saved and then we deleted the mod from our mods folder and then we loaded up the game again and there's the Pete and Wilson trailer just sitting there so we ended up getting a free Pete and Wilson so it kinda justifies overpaying fifty thousand for this trailer so just a FYI if you want like free vehicles just rent them all and then delete your <laughs> machinery rental mod and it will still be there um, so yeah, till next time guys.